Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS. Presenting to you the daily quiz for 25th of August 2021. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. In the efforts to meet the goals of the Paris Agreement, the Climate Action Finance Mobilization Dialogue is a part of the partnership between India and Option A European Union, Option B United Kingdom, Option C United States of America, Option D Australia. What is the context? This article in the PIB today talks about the India US Climate and Clean Energy Agenda 2030 partnership. What is it? It is the India and US partnership on clean energy. This is the bilateral cooperation between India and the US to meet the goals of Paris Agreement and this will focus on climate action and clean energy. And through this partnership both the countries will work on number 1 mobilizing finance for the use of clean energy number 2 innovative technologies for decarbonizing the sectors that is for reducing the carbon emissions number 3 build capacity to measure manage and adapt to the risks of climate change and this partnership is structured along two main tracks the first track would be the strategic clean energy partnership and the second track is the climate action and finance mobilization dialogue track so the right answer to our question would be option c united states of america Coming to question number 2 which of the given statements with respect to global manufacturing risk index is or are correct number 1 it is published annually by the world bank number 2 india has become the second most desired manufacturing destination according to the global manufacturing risk index 2021 Number 3 the index ranks 190 countries against each other assessing costs risks and conditions impacting manufacturing why this question this article in the hindu newspaper today says that as per the 2021 global manufacturing risk index india has overtaken the us and it has become the second most sought after manufacturing destination globally so china tops this index followed by india and then the us in the 2020 index india was ranked at number 3 but now india is world's second most desired manufacturing destination as per this global manufacturing risk index the countries are ranked based on a range of factors that include risk and cost factors political and economic risk labor costs the market conditions as well as market access now coming back to the question The Global Manufacturing Risk Index is not published by the World Bank. This index is published by Cushman and Wakefield, which is a real estate consulting firm. Statement number 2 as we discussed is correct and statement number 3 is incorrect because this index ranks 47 countries across Europe, Americas and Asia Pacific. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option B2 only. Moving on to question number 3. Consider the following statements with respect to Nidhi companies. It is a type of company in the Indian non-banking finance sector recognized under section 406 of the Companies Act of 2013. Its core business involves lending and borrowing money between its members or shareholders. Nidhi company does not require a license from the Reserve Bank of India to operate. Which of the given statements is or are correct? What is the context? This article in the Hindu newspaper today says that the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has warned people against parking their savings or their money in these nidhi companies. The ministry has found out that none of these companies that had applied to be recognized as nidhi companies have complied with the norms. So what exactly are these nidhi companies? A nidhi company is a type of company in the Indian non-banking financial sector. and these companies are recognized under section 406 of the companies act of 2013 so what do these companies do they facilitate borrowing and lending money among their members only that is they are involved in borrowing from the members and then lending to the members only and they are known under different names such as nidhi companies or permanent fund or benefit funds and also mutual benefit company and these nidhi companies are regulated by the ministry of corporate affairs and they need not register themselves with the reserve bank of india however to be recognized as legitimate they have to be recognized under the section 406 of companies act 2013 also the amended nidhi rules of 2014 
But as per this article, out of all the scrutinized Niti companies, none of them have complied with the norms. Now coming back to the question. Statement number one is correct. Statement number two is correct because it is involved in lending and borrowing money only between its members or shareholders. And statement number three is also correct because it does not require a license from the RBI to function. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option D, 1, 2 and 3. Moving on to question number 4. Which of the given statements with respect to Lebanon is or are incorrect? It opens out to the Mediterranean Sea to the west. It borders Israel, Syria and Jordan. It touches the West Bank area. Why have we taken this question? We have taken this map based question because Lebanon has been in news. Lebanon has been facing multiple crises in the last couple of years. In the year 2020, we saw a horrific Beirut port blast. And also there is an economic crisis, there is a political crisis and this editorial column in the Hindu newspaper today talks of all these crises that the country is facing. And hence we have taken a map based question on Lebanon. When we look at the map here, we see that to its west the country is bordered by the Mediterranean Sea. Therefore statement number one becomes correct. Lebanon borders Syria as well as Israel, but it does not border Jordan. Therefore, statement number two becomes incorrect. The West Bank area is here and it does not touch or border Lebanon. Therefore, statement number three also becomes incorrect. Since statement number two and three are incorrect, the right answer to our question would be option B, two and three only, since the question is asking us for the incorrect statements. Now, let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2016. In the context of developments in bioinformatics, the term transcriptome, sometimes seen in the news, refers to Option A, a range of enzymes used in genome editing Option B, the full range of mRNA molecules expressed by an organism Option C, the description of the mechanism of gene expression Option D, a mechanism of genetic mutations taking place in cells First, we must understand that transcriptome is a combination of two words that is transcript and genome. Transcriptome is related to the process of transcript production during the biological process of transcription. So it is not an enzyme used in genome editing. It is not a mechanism of genetic mutations and it is also not the description of mechanisms of gene expression. So what exactly is transcriptome? Transcriptome of a cell or a tissue is the complete collection of RNAs that is transcribed in it. So the right answer to our question would be option B. Now let us take up the fact of the day which is International Financial Services Centers Authority. What is the context? According to the PIB article here, the International Financial Services Centers Authority has issued a framework for setting up of international trade financing services platform. And this is being set up at the GIFT International Financial Services Centre. We will discuss about these ITFS a little later. India's first International Financial Service Centre has been set up at GIFT City in Gandhinagar in Gujarat. And this will be regulated by the International Financial Services Centres Authority. Before moving on to IFSCA, let us understand what are these International Financial Services Centres. These IFSCs are financial centers that cater to customers outside the jurisdictions of a domestic economy. So it is also known as an offshore financial center since it deals with the flow of finance or financial products and services across the borders. What does it do? It will provide the Indian corporates easier access to global financial markets. So in turn, it will complement and promote further development of financial markets in India. It will also bring back to India the financial services that are otherwise carried out in offshore financial centers by the Indian corporate entities or overseas branches of these financial institutions. And this is achieved by offering business and regulatory environment that is comparable to other leading international financial centers. For example, there are existing international or global financial centers such as London, Singapore or New York. An IFSC provides for all these services. It will help in fundraising, it will help in wealth management, global tax management, mergers and acquisitions between transnational corporations and all other such financial services. So now that we know what International Financial Services Centre is, let us understand what is IFSCA. 
This IFSCA was established in April 2020 under the International Financial Services Centre Authority Act of 2019. And this is a statutory body. So what is it? It is an authority to develop and regulate financial products, financial services and financial institutions in the International Financial Service Centres in India. And so far as we've discussed, India has just one International Financial Service Centre. And the main goal of IFSCA is to promote ease of doing business in IFSCs and to provide world-class regulatory environment. Now let us talk about International Trade Financing Services Platform. This ITFS will be an electronic platform and this will provide access to different financiers so that the exporters as well as importers can meet their trade finance requirements. So this platform will help in arranging credit for all the exporters as well as importers from global institutions. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.